Here is a message by Leslie M. John, titled, Jesus Christ is the Savior. Jesus Christ is the Savior. Message by Leslie M. John. Why did Jesus come into the world? There was story told once that a man was sitting in porch watching birds play in the snow, but when it became unbearable for them to stay any longer in the cool weather outside they sought refuge into the house, but they feared man sitting in the porch. The man moved a bit and invited them to come in, but they would not come in. The man threw few grains, yet they would not come in because of the fear that the man might harm them. Then the man thought that he should become one like them and invite them into the house. Yes, when he became one like them and invited them, they readily accepted him and hopped into the house. Similarly, God is so great and awesome that we would not be able to approach him unless he became a man to be the mediator for us and lived among us. The Bible says no man has ever seen God. Moses asked for seeing him, but he could see only the back portion of him, when he walked by the cleft, where God stationed him to watch him pass by. That is why, the Father in heaven sent his one and only Son into the world to become one like us and to preach about the kingdom of God. Jesus told us that he and the Father are one. Jesus lived a poor life and walked great distances on this earth, and also went by small boats to reach places to preach repentance and the imminence of the kingdom of God. Jesus did miracles on this earth, healed many sick, freed men from the possession of demons, raised dead and finally he became the perfect sacrifice for us. God placed Adam and Eve to move freely in the Garden of Eden, and God walked with them in the cool of the day. But one day, Satan went to them and deceived them by asking them to eat the fruit forbidden by God. Satan said to Eve that if they ate the forbidden fruit, they would become like God and their eyes will be open. The eyes of Adam and Eve were open not to see God any more but to become sinners. They found that they were naked and ashamed of coming out to see God any more when he called them. God provided them skin coats and concealed their shame and nakedness. They lost the grace of God and became sinners. Often there is heard among Christians and others as to how someone could die for our sins and we receive salvation. Their question arises as a consequence of their hearing that Jesus died for our sins and whoever accepts him will be saved. The Bible provides answer and if anyone seeks answer outside the Bible, he or she is only casting aspersions on the efficacy of the precious blood shed on the cross by the Lamb of God, who did many miracles in his time on the earth and showed the way to salvation. The answer we receive from the Holy Scriptures is yes. Apostle Paul writes an epistle to the Romans 3, 25, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God and in. Romans 5 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Just as sin is inherited by man from his seminal head, Adam, the remission of the sins is possible by the last Adam, Jesus, who bore our sins upon the cross of Calvary and died for. Just as Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole, which was lifted high to be seen by everyone, and whoever saw that brass serpent upon the pole was saved, God lifted high and exhibited His one and only Son upon the cross, and whoever saw and believed in Jesus was saved and will be saved. The shadow of Jesus becoming the Savior was presented in the Old Testament in Numbers 21 9. The purpose of Jesus dying upon the cross was to provide a way of salvation for whole mankind that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Romans 3 21-27 but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time His righteousness that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Jesus was the Son of Man on this earth, yet he was divine and the Son of God. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life and bore our sins and died on the cross. Abraham was ready to sacrifice his son, Isaac, but God provided to him a lamb in place of his son, as a sacrifice. Hebrews 11:17 by faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son God tested Abraham by asking him to take his only son Isaac into the land of Moriah, and offer him as a burnt offering upon the one of the mountains, which God would show to him. Testing is different from that of temptation. God never tempts anyone but he will test his children to see how firm and true they are in their faith. It is the Satan that brings in temptations. 1 Corinthians 10 13, 
no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful, He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, but when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Abraham by faith took his son Isaac, who willingly obeyed his father's demand of offering a sacrifice and accompanied him. Isaac did not know that he was to be the sacrifice that Abraham had in his mind, but he obediently followed. At one point Isaac even asked his father, where was the lamb of sacrifice? Genesis 22 7, And Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham replied to him that God would provide the sacrifice. Rightly so, God provided sacrifice when Isaac was bound by Abraham, and was placed upon the wood on the altar. The angel of the Lord appeared unto Abraham and asked him not to lay hands on Isaac. Abraham looked up and saw a ram that was caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham took the ram and offered him as sacrifice unto the Lord. The death of Jesus was unique in itself. He came down onto this earth from the heavenly place and died for us in compliance to the plan of salvation God had for us. When the offenders of Jesus beat him and flogged him he could have called for help from the heavenly Father but he did not seek such help. When Peter cut off one of the ears of soldiers in defense of their attack on his Jesus, he was asked to keep back his sword and was also admonished that those who lived by the sword would die by the sword. Jesus also asked him if knew that if Jesus desired the Father in heaven would send an army of angels to defend him. Yes, the Father in heaven would have sent army of angels to kill all those, who persecuted him, but if he did that the purpose for which he came into this world would have been defeated. When Pilate boasted of himself saying he had power to release Jesus or crucify him Jesus said that Pilate could have no power against Jesus except if it were given him from above. Jesus also warned him saying whoever delivers him to be crucified had greater sin. John 19 10-11. Pilate delivered Jesus to be crucified and who wrote a title and put on the cross. John 19 19, and Pilate wrote a title, and had it put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth the King of the Jews. On the cross Jesus gave up His Spirit on His own and commended His Spirit into the hands of the Father in heaven. He was numbered among the transgressors and none of His bones was broken fulfilling Old Testament prophecies in Isaiah chapter 53. One of the ecclesiastical law was that Israelites were asked to keep the Lord's Passover, Leviticus 23 5. In Exodus 12, 3-17 instructions were detailed as to how a lamb without any blemish to be offered as sacrifice unto the Lord and the blood of the lamb be applied on the door posts of their houses so that when the Lord passes by those homes, He would see the blood of the lamb applied and spare their firstborn. In the New Testament the shadow of the sacrifice of the Lamb of God is fulfilled in the crucifixion of Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and taking His blood to the Father in heaven as a perfect atonement. Hebrews 11:28. Through faith He kept the Passover, and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Jesus became perfect tabernacle for us not made of man, but becoming a sacrifice, mediator, and a high priest for us. Hebrews 9 to 14 But Christ being come an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats, and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? As it began to dawn toward the first week of the day, at the end of Sabbath, Mary Magdalene and other Mary came to the sepulchre, where Jesus was laid to rest, after His crucifixion, and death. There was a great earthquake and the angel of the Lord descended and rolled the stone back and sat upon it. The angel of the Lord proclaimed good news of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 28 5-6, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. The writer Hebrews says about the risen Lord Jesus Christ, Hebrews 1 3, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. His name alone is glorified. Dear friend. Believe in Lord Jesus Christ to have everlasting said. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3:16. Thank you for listening to the message by Leslie M. John, title, Jesus Christ is the Savior. Written and brought to you by Leslie M. John. God bless. 
Copyright Leslie M. John. All rights reserved.